I love 3D printing and I always wanted a custom mechanical keyboard. So why not combine those two things and 3D print one for myself? So in this video, I design a keyboard, customize it, 3D print it, and then finally hand wire and code the whole thing. Trust me, it was a journey, but in the end, it was all worth it. So now let me show you how I made it. So I've done some research and the first thing I wanna do is make a keyboard layout. The website that I'm gonna use for this is keyboardlayouteditor.com and it's just a really nice space to make the keyboard layout you want. I have to reconfigure a lot of stuff since I'm German, but don't worry if all the S, Ös and Üs don't mean anything to you. So what I'm dealing with right now is getting the right keyboard layout. The good thing is that I already know which kind of keycap set I'm gonna buy. So I know which kind of keycaps I can work with and what their width is, because that's really important right now. For example, I want a really small keyboard, but I still want arrow keys. And now I have to kind of custom make this in a way that fits and makes sense with the keys that I actually ordered already. So I finally worked out the design that I wanna go with. I hope that what I thought out made sense. And yeah, I'm gonna actually finally know when I get all the keycaps that I ordered. But until then, I gotta design everything. So if that doesn't make sense, I'll have to start from scratch. But I did a lot of research and I hope that it actually all works. So the next thing for me to do is download my layout and then import that into Fusion 360 and actually design the keyboard plate and then the case. I made two parts for the main keyboard plate. Both of them are 1.5 millimeters thick and the first one is the actual mounting depth of the actual key switch and then I had to make one and a half millimeters extra just to give the 3D print enough strength to actually hold. All that I'm doing right now is clicking every keycap hole and giving it one millimeter more space for the keycaps to actually fit in. And I gotta do this on both sides. It's really annoying, but it's important. Another thing that I just did was make cutouts for where all the stabilizers are gonna go. Stabilizers are super important for your bigger keys like your enter or your space bar, but they need extra room. So in the reinforcement part of the keyboard plate, I had to cut those out. Next up, I made all the screw holes that eventually are going to connect the top plate to the body of the keyboard. And the top plate is pretty much done for now, and now I gotta design the body itself. Second day. Yesterday I already spent like two hours in Fusion 360 designing all the intricacies. I now have the top plate done and I also have a beginning of the keyboard base plate. Um, I have to make the standoffs where actually the top plate rests on. Those are kind of done. And then I need to make an opening for the USB-C connection. Okay, honestly the amount of standoffs I've put in there is a little absurd I think. I might have overdone it. But let's be real, I'd rather be too supported and be a little bit stiffer than, you know, actually have the top plate wiggle and bend in the end. Everything's ready and I'm gonna throw it on the printer now. All right, so that's the keyboard that I'm gonna print now. And this is where today's sponsor PCBWay comes in. Even a small keyboard like this is too big to fit on most standard sized printers. So then you have two options, either print your keyboard in two or even three parts. And honestly, it doesn't look good. You'll always have that seam. And the other thing is going with PCBWay. They have all the machinery and tools that you don't. You can, you know, have large things 3D printed. You can even get metal 3D printed, huge resin prints or something CNC machine. They're my one-stop shop if I ever want to make something that I can't make myself. They check everything manually from their experts before it goes into production. This is super helpful for someone like me who kind of knows their stuff, but not really, let's be honest. And they are experts and really help me with it and really make sure that the finished part comes out perfectly. So thank you to PCBWay for sponsoring this. And if you wanna make anything, just check the link in the description. For this print that I'm doing today, I'm lucky enough to have the Ender 3 V3 Plus here because that's just large enough to actually fit that keyboard on there so I can print it myself. This is how barely that print fits under the print bed. It's not even a centimeter, maybe a couple millimeters. So I just took the keyboard of the printer and here's the top plate and this is the bottom case. And they also fit together pretty nicely already. So I'm pretty happy for the first try. I chose this marble PLA because I think it looks really nice and just has an overall really cool look. Also I checked and generally the flex is really good, but here for the space bar, 
Things are a little sketchy. So I might have to make some design tweaks, adding an extra standoff right at the bottom to just stabilize the space bar. And also I have one other problem that I realized. So this fits in here pretty perfectly and I'm pretty happy with that. But when I actually plug in this cable to put it here, then we can see that this standoff is in the way and I need to move that a little bit. So knowing the flaws, I'll go back to Fusion and make some adjustments. All right, that was really tricky. I just had to adjust the spacers um, and also make sure that it doesn't bend too much when it's in the end, so it's properly supported. And yeah, whenever you're changing stuff and there's so much downstream, things just get a lot more complicated, it takes longer, and the chance of everything just falling apart gets a lot higher. All right, my keycaps just arrived. So now I'll test fit these into this top plate and see if what I'm building here makes sense at all and if I planned everything right. And if so, I'll print the new version of this that's hopefully gonna be the final one. So now I'm clipping in all the stabilizers. I'm really excited. All the switches are in and now I gotta put the keycaps on. And honestly, this is kind of a make or break moment. If everything fits, I'm gonna see this keyboard semi-assembled, at least how it's gonna look for the first time. And if it doesn't work, I pretty much gotta start over from scratch. So, fingers crossed. <laughs> It's a moment to celebrate. I just kind of assembled all of this and the general layout that I thought of works and it all fits together. It's not perfect yet, but this is just a test. I gotta print some new stuff as well, but this is really important. So here you can see and here. I honestly can't tell you how excited I am about this. So I'm gonna start the next print for the newer version of this and then tomorrow I can start assembling. It's the next day and the print came out really nicely and I think it fixed a lot of the problems that I had yesterday. I now have some extra support for the space bar and the PCB cable now fits perfectly. So with those two things taken care of, I can now start the assembly process and that and the coding, I'm still pretty scared of. So the next thing I have to do right now is generate a wiring diagram for the keyboard so I know how to actually connect everything and then from there I actually got to do it and solder everything. So I'm excited for that. So this is Keyboard Firmware Builder and you basically just go to your keyboard layout editor and copy the raw data and then just paste it in here and press import. And now it shows you a ready-made wiring diagram. So this shows me how to wire everything and technically I could also make a firmware with this already, but since I'm using a different controller, I'll work around that a little bit. One thing that I decided to do right now is make an extra lip around the bottom case of the keyboard, just so that the whole top plate can sit on that on all edges, which is gonna give it some extra stability because the sides work kinda janky. Also, you can see in Fusion that I'm on version 22 right now for this keyboard, so a lot of small iterations have been made. Also, I just put in the stabilizers for the bigger keys. That was a part that I definitely couldn't 3D print myself either. One learning that I'm definitely taking away is that my top plate was too thin. This is three millimeters now, and this is kind of necessary because I got the low profile switches, but you can see how much this thing actually bends and it should be a lot stiffer. So get the regular height keys and then you can make this plate a little thicker and you'll have a lot more stability and a lot less problems to solve. Right now I'm in the process of twisting like 60 or 70 of these little diodes that I need to wire in and it's super tedious. <laughs> So there's a lot of soldering to do. First, you gotta put all the diodes on, solder them to the switches. Then you gotta solder the diodes to each other in a row. And lastly, you gotta make the columns. So the first part of soldering is now done. And while it's not pretty, I think it's gonna work. And so now I gotta make the columns. Yesterday I ran into a bit of a problem because the standard soldering wire that I have is way too thick to put all of those in the keyboard. But thanks to Joe Scotto, I know that I can just take apart this LAN cable and use the inner cables because they're just the right diameter and work perfectly. See, this already has a bunch of really great wires right in it. I want to give a quick shout out to Jan Lunge, Joe Scotto and Mad Mob Labs. 
Without their videos, I could have never made this. So check out their videos if you want to learn how to like really do this. Getting the installation of the LAN cable wasn't as easy as I had hoped. So if you have the time, just buy the real cables. It's way better and easier, but I got to finish this today and it's Sunday, so I can't buy them. The wiring is going okay so far. To actually uninsulate the cables, I have to burn them off with my soldering iron in the middle there. Honestly, I'm breathing a lot of fumes that I shouldn't be breathing, so maybe get a mask or a ventilation or something because that's, this definitely isn't healthy. <laughs> this is me from editing. One thing I can definitely recommend if you wanna do something like this, start with something small, like just a macro pad and then go to a full size keyboard to just kind of learn and get better in small steps. I'm definitely making some progress on the soldering and also the more I do it, I can see myself getting better, which is nice. I now pre-tinned all of the little connectors and now soldering it gets a lot easier. So yeah, I'm just gonna get on with it. I finally managed to do all of the columns and it was a lot of work. I know I'm not great at this, but it literally took me hours to solder everything. And while I was just saying that, I already realized the mistake, so I'm really scared of this not working and me having to troubleshoot it somehow. So yeah, let's just hope for the best. And now I gotta solder all the cables to the PCB. It's kind of sad, but also nice that I can see how much worse my first solders here are than like the 20th. So I'm gonna have to redo some of them now. Soldering is finally done. I think it took me like five hours-ish now, so it took a long time. I think there's a 50% chance that everything's gonna go well, but we're gonna test it now. You can see how I'm typing here and there's something coming in the software, which is great. <laughs> oh my God, I just tried it and it's actually doing something and I think even all of my keys are being picked up correctly. That would be amazing and the biggest weight of my shoulders. <laughs> I already had one connection come loose, but I resoldered that and hopefully now things are gonna work. Okay, wow, there seem to be some short circuits somewhere in there. In the beginning it actually worked flawlessly once, but now when I actually bend this board a little bit, then it types stuff and depending on how I bend it, it will type different stuff. So yeah, something definitely needs to be fixed. After some issues yesterday where the right buttons wouldn't be triggered or some weird things would happen, I gotta check what's wrong with it. And I think some of the cables are shorting out, so I gotta check and fix that. So I typed all the buttons and saw where the output had anomalies and then checked those, resoldered or re-insulated them. And after some back and forth, things seem to be working now and I can actually type stuff and things appear on the screen. And I'm so happy. <laughs> I honestly thought this would never happen and I'm, I'm just happy so far. So I gotta actually assemble the keyboard and then I think we're pretty much done. I kind of glanced over the firmware part, but honestly I used the tool POG by Jan Longe and with some testing out everything, it went really smoothly and I can only recommend it. After I fixed the bugs yesterday and the keyboard's generally working, it's assembly time today, so get excited with me. Also, I got myself one of these really premium keyboard cables that hopefully matches really well with the keycaps that I have. It's super hard to get all of these cables in here because I made them a little too long. It's finally done, it's finally working. So now let me show you how it actually sounds and types. For now, I really love my keyboard, but I think I can customize it a lot more. At first, this was all gonna be one video, but as I experienced what focus creep really means and my ambitions got bigger and bigger, I realized that I have to make a second episode and that's already planned. And in that episode, I'm gonna customize the keyboard a lot more. I wanna make my own custom keycaps and 3D print those. And I also have something really special planned. So make sure that you're subscribed and don't miss the next video in this series.